Hi, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I wanted to do a quick session on programming the new Waves audio codecs and using some of the modulation matrix to create a really nice moving sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stack saw sound, which is very popular in pop and dance stuff. We're going to modulate that a bit, I'm going to make it move around a bit. Then we're going to use some LFOs to start doing some rhythmic stuff as well. And I'm also going to use the ARP sequencer as well to show you an alternative to that and using some effects. We're going to start from scratch. So the first thing you want to do is get it back to this state, which is the in initialized state, which means it's, it's, it's not using a preset. It's just this is what it will ship with. And as you can hear, that doesn't sound that good. It doesn't sound that exciting. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I love programming my own sounds. I, I, presets are great ways of inspiring you, but the great thing is if you can build your own sounds, that's even better. So I wanna give you a quick show and tell and get, if you've got this, this plugin or thinking of buying it, how uh, to get around it. So the first thing we want to do is create that stack saw sound. So straight away when you initialize it, you've got two saw shapes, but you can only hear once. There's number one and there's number two. And if we come into the middle here, can hear a bit of modulating going on as well. And the way that stack saws work is basically you detune them so you get this one and you and if we play that now, can it starting to move around a bit? But there's something even better than doing that because that will just keep it in one static position, the, the tuning. So I'm gonna bring that back to the, to the, to the zero point in the middle uh, or as near as damn it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, one of the LFOs. I'm going to use LFO one to change the tuning of this so that as we play, it will move around, be, start becoming a moving sound. So using LFO one as our source in the modulation matrix here, then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to oscillator to frequency. Now, the first thing you want to, be, want to uh, know is that the, the minute you start turning this up, it's going to change the depth of the LFO effect upon that. So if we push it all the way to the top, you can hear that and we do so some like tuning a radio but if we bring it all the way back down to the bottom and just gently start pushing it up and here's the rate of the LFO and I'm on a sine wave and a sine wave means that it moves up and down like a wave on the on the ocean there's no hard edge and we want that. I'm gonna pull this back down a bit further again. So we've got some movement now. So that's the first thing we want to do. What I want to do next is come into the VCA here, which is the way that the sound develops over time. So the attack is how fast it takes for the sound to go from some no sound to complete sound. And with the attack at zero, the sound's in straight away. Then the decay time, uh, which is the time it takes for the note to decay. The sustain time, how long it stays on for with the keys pressed. If I pull that to zero, it's very quiet. And then the release time, how long the sound hangs around after I've let go of my key. Put some punch in as well. So now I've got this sound. Starting to get there. So the next thing I want to do is put some echo on it as well. Put some reverb in as well. And push the top end up a bit. The next thing I want to do is give that sound some, some actually rhythmic movement. And the way we're going to do that is that these two LFOs, three and four, are timed LFOs. That means that over time, they are locked to your sequencer. So these ones are free form, so the rate's moving all the time in its own unique way. These are actually locked to the synchronization of your DAW. So if we come here, and I'm going to use this to change how the amplifier works. And the amplifier is, is the sound coming back out of... Uh, this uh, synth. So I'm going to turn this up to about half 
I'm going to choose that LFO3 and we're going to go down to VCA. You can hear now it's moving over time, but I want to put that on 16th, let's say. But I want to come to this uh, this this saw wave that's got a hard front edge. Now when I play the synth sound now. We can hear that punch at the front end and we can change that by bringing the, sh the punch down. And even take the VCA up a bit and give it a slight less hard edge and have a softer edge. When I got a rhythm, we put the bottom end in. Now that's okay, but it's it's not that interesting a rhythm. So instead of doing that, what we could do instead, we could turn that off, come to the ARP Ediator and get a sequencer, and you can turn these on and off. So we turn that one off there. I'm gonna make this just eight steps long, and now when I hold down notes, I get a nice sequence going. What we also have is a gate here, that's the, the length that the note plays for. And unlike the arpeggiator that you'd normally use where the notes are changing, this is just being used as a gate that's actually just making a rhythmic filter in a sense. If we turn the, the release time down again. If you want to give that a bit more welly then, what we could do is put some distortion in. Some chorus. Put the reverb up a bit. So there we go, we've gone from having no sound whatsoever, we've got two saw waves, and we've modulated first the tuning of that saw wave to give us that nice stacked synth sound, then we've used a LFO to actually change the sound so as you play it you get the, the gating sound, or we've chosen to use the sequencer instead to give us some more flexibility, and then we've added some effects in as well, and as you can hear, you can get a great sound. I would really strongly recommend you start having a go at making your own sounds. As I've shown you, it's dead easy to get great sounds. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.